Good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, September the 7th. Hey, we're joined by our usual crowd. We're going to have Josh, Tom, and Gentry talking about their lakes. We're also going to have Lee Pitts talking about Neely Henry and Weiss Lake. And don't forget, guys, this Saturday, this morning, it's the uh, Neely Henry Bass Foundation Stocking Fundraiser Tournament. There's going to be some bass stocked on Neely Henry. Lynn Johnson and the crew over there is going to have something ready for you to go. Sign up. It's a $100 tournament fee and then $25 per angler. 100% of the $100 entry fee is going to be paid back that day, but the other $25 per, per angler is a fundraiser to put bass back in Neely Henry Lake. We're going to put some good largemouth in that lake. Get out there and join that fun. But right now, we're going to hear what the guys have to say. Hey, we're joined by our good friend Lee Pitts, going to talk a little bit of Weiss Lake and some Neely Henry fishing. Let's touch on Neely Henry first this week, Lee. What's happening on the river? You know, it's about the same thing as it was last week. It's uh, it's September, so here, you know, here we go. It, it's not like uh, we're looking for any major changes, but the the bite is okay. It's it's not just. Uh, you know, just wide open, but you can still catch him. It's, it's slowing down a little bit. Uh, the plastics has really, really been the deal. Uh, little six inch worm, some kind of little creature bait, and kind of just, just you know, downsizing a little bit and just slowing down. That's that's the deal. The dock bite has been pretty good on Neely. Uh, looking for brush, you know, with a with little bit of shade that you can get around those docks, I think it helps. But it's just a slow slow down let them look at it let them come pick it up that's that kind of deal so you're talking more finesse type tactics it's not necessarily a jig flipping bite with plastics you're talking kind of scale down slow down shaky heads drop shots stuff like that yeah just something smaller they're really not wanting to chase that big bait i think uh the bait that i've been seeing is small so it's just one of those deals match the hatch downsize a little bit and just kind of uh, you know, we let that water temperature cool down a little more. The daylight hours are starting to get a little bit shorter, so that's going to help. And it's one of those things. There's still fish to be caught. Uh, we're we're just in that little stage right now that they're little finicky fish are in transition. Uh, they're they're moving from some of the deeper water and trying to get back up. They're not quite in that super shallow stuff yet. But around these docks, they've got enough shade, got enough bait that they can just kind of lay around and pick what they want. Sounds kind of like me at a buffet table. Let's talk about Weiss Lake. Tell me what's going on there. Uh, our water situation, you know, we, we're still low. Uh, so it's one of those deals. If, like me, I run some places that you probably shouldn't. And it's just, you're getting at that where we're six, eight inches low. So some of these little shortcuts that you can take might want to either trim her up a little higher or, or, or mash on that mercury a little more to get it up. So... You know, just watch the water. It, it's about the same here. You know, we're looking, um, hadn't had much of a grass bite this week. There's just not enough water on it. But the fish are starting to, uh, with, with the bait fish coming into these pockets, they're starting to move a little bit. Worm bite has, has been the deal here too. And, and even some of those, uh, like a biffle bug on, a, on the hard head, on that swing head out there, something you can kind of move around hit off these points that the fish are starting to lead that deeper deeper water and they're starting to get up there where we're just we're counting down i mean it's coming but uh the spots have picked up a little bit the largemouth have been a little scarce but those spotted bass they're starting to get off these points anywhere you can find some hard bottoms that's where you look for it right now leave it brother i appreciate everything we'll talk to you again next week my friend Hey, we got our man Gentry Gordy joining us right here. He's out getting ready for a tournament. But let's talk Lake Martin, Gentry. What's happening on the lake? Um, well, we got this colder weather down there. Um, so you're going to see the, you know, it, it's going to drop the water a little bit. Just depends on how long it'll stay. Um, and I expect that those the schools start to push a little further back. You know, the bait's tiny, um, but it's. We're getting into the year now where it's starting to cool off, and it's all going to be about finding the bait. 
Yeah, it looks like we're going to have some uh, temperatures that are even going to dip into the 70s as the highs and the overnight lows are getting into the 60s overnight. That's got to be making a, a difference, right? Yeah, it, it will. And you've got to look like this time of year is when you get like the little quarter ounce rattle traps, the smaller baits. Um, they, I mean, that's just what they key on. I mean, there's still some big, you know, gizzard chad and stuff feeding, but the majority of them to go out and just catch a bunch and have fun. I think you're going to have to target the bait. Um, you know, there's always fish deep on this time of year on brush piles and, and they start to move up around those little bit deeper docks, but it's, it's going to be all about finding the bait at market. All right, that covers Lake Martin. I'm sure the, the bluegill are still up around those docks up there, especially in the evening with the green lights. Uh, let's talk yeah. Jordan Lake. What's happening there? Well, as you can see behind me, um, I actually just found some bluegill beds offshore, Dano, and I think the bluegill are on it because there was a couple that would nip at the worm, and then you'd catch a, you know, three-pound largemouth on it. So, you know, I, they should be there. This weekend, if you want to take some time out around, see if you can find those offshore bluegill beds. You know there's going to be some up shallow. I don't, I ain't got that far yet. I don't know if they're up there. Um, but offshore bluegill beds right now are producing. Um, and, uh, you know, in this time of year, you go up the river with the current. If we can get some, it always plays up there. Have you thought of maybe Carolina rigging like a destroyer or something like that up there and see what happens around those bluegill beds? Yeah, well, not not yet, but because um, right now they're they're hitting a green pumpkin jig pretty good. But um, I may pull I may pull the old ball and chain out here in a minute and see what happens. <laughs> um, can you catch those bluegill? I mean, is it a drop shot like maybe a mealworm or something or just? Oh yeah, absolutely because. They're they're pulling down on my six inch drop shot worm, and you know you know, and you tell that's what it is because I set the hook on three of them and come back with a piece of worm, you know, half my worm missing. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Some of the bluegill are out deep, folks. So are the bass. <laughs> Gentry, yeah. Go have some fun out there. Get ready for that derby. Hey, we got Tom Ott here. We're going to talk a little bit of fishing on Lake Garner. Oh. Tom, what's happening on the big lake? Well, I can tell you this, Dano. Fishing is changing, um, and it's getting slowly better. I'll okay. just put it like that. Yeah, it's it's slowly getting better. I think the you know the little temperature changes we're getting, some of the rain we've had, are finally starting to move these fish around a little bit. You know, and it started pulling back towards the grass with the bait. Your bait starting to move back into the grassy areas and stuff like that. So, you know, I think uh, some of the the best fun you can have right now is throwing just a you know, throwing, a, uh, what is it? The little chatter bait, the mini, whatever. The mini. I'm not, oh, it's mini not, it's all the names. Yeah. The mini max, uh, that right there is, uh, I've been hearing it's killing them. Uh, I've been throwing a, uh, it's a Z man. It's basically the same thing. It's just a real small jig head, small blade, uh, putting a, you know, a straight tail minnow on it and just flinging it out there in these big pods of, of fish that are busting just let it sink to the bottom and pull it up a couple of times and we're catching just tons of schoolers that way i mean it's just a ball so i mean that's fun that's not going to win you any tournaments certainly but uh every once in a while you'll catch one that that might sit on the board but that's about it are you still finding some of the fish in the intermediate intermediate deeper areas you know 10 12 foot uh seems like some of the the deep deep fish i don't know if they vacated they starting to make that progression towards the shallower water a little bit just not seeing as many out there that deep so i've been concentrating a little bit in that shallower area uh, having a lot of fun uh the evening times are a blast with the top water right now uh you can catch them at all sizes just about anywhere you see any activity on the surface i mean it's just it's uh katie bar the door it's a lot of fun uh just watch those treble hooks you know they will jump up there and bite you now <laughs> One of my favorite things for schooling fish this time of the year when they are eating that small bait are those, you know, the little bit larger spy baits, you know, that uh, Duo Realis makes. Throw them on 10-pound line, and you can just kind of swim them through the schools, and the fish respond to them. They may not come up and eat a topwater bait all the time, but that little thing helps. Well, it, it does, uh, you know, if you can stay above the grass, that's really the key, or on the outside edge of the grass. I've been seeing a lot of schooling activity on the river channel on the outside edge of the grass. 
So it's not a big round ball of, of fish that you're seeing, but you're seeing a long stretch of fish. And, you know, they're just, they're just destroying the bait that's hiding in those, in the grass areas and then just popping back out. Uh, let me, I don't want to be remiss and not say anything about the frog bite coming on or the flipping bite. The flipping bite is still really producing well, some larger fish. Uh, the, the frog bite is certainly coming on, uh, I think it's a little harder to get in those big, big mats and throw the frog uh, just, you know, because of the trolling motors and things like that. But if you can get in those isolated patches where you start to see a little cheese on top, those, that, those are those areas you can pick one or two good ones off. Tom, as always, brother, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you again next week, my friend. Hey, we're joined by our bright light, our Josh Heron from Tato Design is going to tell us all about what's going on in the great fishing on Logan Martin and Lay Lake. What's going on at Logan right now? Uh, man, these cooler nights. They're, they're hoping the water temp come down a little bit. Uh, I got to go Sunday for a little bit before the chaos. I think water temps were 82, 84 in there, depending on where you're at. So it's coming down a little bit. Um, fishing was still pretty slow. Uh, yeah. there, was a lot of little, there was a lot of little fish to be caught. And, I mean, you could catch those whether you wanted to go flip docks or pitch a worm on docks or kind of pitch around shallow grass, but I never got on a good quality bite of really anything. So I think this, uh, this water temp and this kind of the slower currents got everything kind of sprayed out and scattered a little bit still. Um, hopefully these fish start kind of clumping up on bait here shortly is, is the goal with these, uh, with these cooler nights and baits going to start widening up in kind of the mouths of these creeks and all, and hopefully kind of start a fall transition rather than. Right. I kind of, right now you're seeing that little tiny young of your bait out there, right? Just the stuff that's yeah, on the it, surface. It, yeah. And man, that's, uh, I don't think that's really something to target to be honest with you. I seem to get less bites in areas with a lot of that. Just could, I think, I mean, they, it's kind of hard to to trick them, or I, I just don't think they have to work that hard. So I I actually try to avoid those places with that much, especially little bitty bait. Um, yeah. Your big cedar creeks this time of year, gizzards will start to migrate into them, and uh, that seems to be something I like to key on is big dominant gizzard forage. Seems to have better quality with it also. Gotcha. All right, let's turn our attention to Lay Lake in the last minute here. I know ABT is getting ready for their championship down there coming up pretty soon. What's going on there? Man, yeah, I think it's going to be 14 to 15 pound a day deal. It's going to be really, really strong. Um, it, it'll take a big, large amount to, to get past that. So, uh, I mean, I, I think you're going to see a primarily a mixed bag deal. Uh, you're going to have a lot of guys targeting spotted bass, whether it be with uh, a jerk bait or live scoping and then you'll you'll have your one or two hour of the window day where the grass fish will possibly play decent um that black slop traditionally forms on the south end of the lake this time of year and that can be some some ridiculous frog bites it's just it in recent years it's a lot harder to find down there yeah. it's not as prolific Well, Josh, brother, we appreciate everything. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Well, that'll wrap up our Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, September the 7th. Hey, thanks to the guys for everything that they have to do every week to share with us and help us put fish in the boat. Don't forget to stop on by Bucks Island and see us, whether you're looking for that new boat, see Katie and everybody in the sales department. If you're looking for a way to keep your boat running good and clean, talk to the parts department, Pat and everybody over there, or... Check in with Misty in the part and the service department. Then, of course, if you're looking for that tackle, go upstairs and see Colin and Jamie in the loft. Folks, we'll be back next week with another fishing report. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.